Hi, Robert Chukro here. In this video, I want to talk about the expression that I hear in Taiji that the mind activates the chi and the chi produces movement of the body. And I, it's a complicated subject, so I'm going to have to talk longer than most of my videos, but I do want to go into it. And I want to preface what I say by the following. What I talk about comes from my academic education, which is mainly physics, but also philosophy, and my martial training, my experience, my thought process, and there are other people who have other academic training, other martial training, other experience, other thought processes, and they may have other ideas about this, and I'm not saying that mine is any better, but I'm just sharing my thinking on the subject. So let's examine the character for Chi. The character for Chi has on the bottom, a horizontal stroke and a vertical stroke, downward vertical stroke, which sex is sort of, sort of suggests the idea of sectioning off four areas. And it was made to represent four different areas that grain could be grown. And the dots in those, each of those four areas are grains of, of rice or of other, other grains. And that character, taken as a whole, represents rice or grain, or it could even mean just food. The character for chi has the top, a top part which is something mysterious, some vapor coming off the rice or the grain. And the idea is that there's something that we don't know about this. If we knew, we would include it in the character. And you see that in all the other characters, rich with meaning, rich with meaning. So chi could, was used for a lot of different things. It was used for breath. It was used for life force, spirit, a lot of different things. And um, it might have even been used for something we don't know about. So the question is, can the mind activate the chi? And then can the chi produce movement? And certainly movement of the type that's indigenous to Tai Chi, which is Nei Jin, in internal strength. That is movement that comes from internal strength, rather than the contraction of muscles through um, pulling bones, which is called Li. So Jin is a higher level of, of strength, and the Nei Jin is the strength in Tai Chi, not muscular strength, brute muscular strength. So can, is any of that possible? Well, we know now that by having an intention to do something, our brain will send electricity through the nerves to the muscles that will do that action. And we know pretty much how that occurs through the nerves, it's been well studied, and through the muscles. That has also been well studied, how that occurs. Not made, maybe not completely known, but very well studied. The concept that electricity is involved in this is a more re fairly recent thing compared to martial arts in China. It was only in the mid maybe 1700s, the, maybe the mid 1700s, that it was starting to percolate through that electricity was involved in muscular action. But I don't think the Chinese knew that. What they did feel is the following. They felt qi. I feel it. feel it all the time. I, it's the basis of traditional Chinese medicine, which uh, is thousands of years old and can have um, 
tremendously valuable health effects. I know that from my experience and from the experience of some of my students, one of whom was dying and was brought back to life by my acupuncturist. So I'm not saying that she doesn't exist at all. There's no question that it does. I'm not sure what it is, but I do feel it involves electricity. And so do others, because a lot of experimentation is going on. And I know what electricity feels like because my hobby when I was a kid was electricity. And I played with all kinds of equipment and I got sh a lot of shocks. And so I know what it feels like to be have electricity in my body. It shouldn't be there. Also, acupuncture, which is part of traditional Chinese medicine, not the main part, but a large part, the main part is the, are the herbs, <clears throat> involves electricity, and it's thought that it does, because when you take a piece of metal, the needle is a piece of metal, and you insert it into the tip bodily tissues, the bodily fluids act as an electrolyte which cause, which generate an electrical current, which does stimulate the qi. And they go beyond that and add um, a pulsing electrical current to the needle, you know, attach a, an electrode, and you can feel that, and that also intensifies the effect. So electricity can intensify qi. And qi involves, I won't say it is, but it has an electrical component. My idea is that there is some sort of intercommunication between the different cells and the organs of the body through some sort of electricity. It wouldn't be gravity. It wouldn't be nuclear energy. Pretty much the only thing left is electricity. And you can feel that. So. The question is, is the electricity that I can produce in, through my nerves, if I have control over it, and I do, most people don't even know that they're doing it because the, of the arrangement of the muscles relative to the joints and the bones is such that when you exert a small amount of external force, you are using a huge amount of internal force in your muscle. And that masks any sensation. Also, we do it all the time, so we don't even not recognize it anymore. But when you're very relaxed and opening up the body, releasing muscular contraction, then you start to feel all these things. So my idea is that the nerve energy is a little bit different from the chi or the learner of electricity is different from the chi electricity that I feel. And I can regulate the neural electricity to go to various parts of my body, and that does activate the chi. So the mind can activate the chi through your own neural electricity, in my view. I'm convinced of that. The neural electricity can also activate movement. How it does that is something that I've written about I feel it has to do with the water in the tissues rather than the muscular contraction and that that creates a kind of movement and strength that's quite different from the contractive muscular strength. So it's not far-fetched when they felt the chi and felt their own electricity would feel that the mind can activate the chi and that the chi would activate the movement. The qi was, qi activation was more of a byproduct of the mental and the physical. So both the mental and the physical contribute to the flow of qi, accentuate the flow of qi, but they are not the flow of qi. They're not, in my view. So think about that. Thank you.